Muay Thai, or Thai boxing, is a sport where one uses nine parts of the body, such as the head, the fists, the elbows, the knees, and the feet, and turns them into a formidable armory of self-defense. Many regard Thai boxing as an art form because of the elaborate warm-up routine that happens before every fight. This fighting sport has come from an open-air bare-knuckle event into the boxing ring, complete with padded gloves. It takes time to study and master the technique. Thai boxing has been practiced since time immemorial. The warm-up routine has evolved from a background of bare-knuckle fighting and has become both a beautiful and colorful ritual in modern times. Thai boxing is in itself artistic and for this reason cannot be compared in terms of effectiveness or efficiency. The most ancient of old world physical techniques have been developed to give the boxer better concentration, health, strength and sportsmanship. This national art form of Thailand has recently enjoyed popularity both from Thai people and the international sporting world to such an extent that Thai boxing has now become truly international. A good fighter needs a lightning quick reaction, sharp footwork and strength. He needs to be courageous and intelligent. All these qualities are developed only through long hours spent in the boxer's training school. Boxing contests, both for professionals and amateurs, are not governed by a strict framework of rules. Interest in the Thai boxing art has grown rapidly among many nationalities. Some learn the techniques for physical exercise or self-defense. Others earn their living from boxing once they turn professional. Several of them would like to be coaches in the sport or become owners of a boxing ring. Only time will tell whether or not the opportunities arise. People from various countries have become students at several boxing camps and have entered several boxing competitions. These events have ensured better understanding of the art. Though Thai boxing has become popular all over the world, one should recognize that it is a far more dangerous sport than many others. Amateur Thai boxing has been a hobby for both Thai and foreigners alike. The rules and regulations of amateur boxing have developed to the stage where they are accepted all over the world. This benefits the sport and promotes a greater admiration for it. The development of championships at all levels and ages is a goal many would like to see since Thai boxing is seen as a great honour 
and a display of great courage, as well as a good source of income for the boxer and his family. Today, coaches train boxers both willingly and with dedication. Morale is very important for the boxer and it has helped students to gain victory in many boxing bouts. Training and timetable are determined in accordance with the physical abilities of each student so that he can become more fit and healthy. Training involves attention being paid to the respiration and blood circulation systems as well as the muscle groups of the arm, hand and foot. The result should be an increase in the boxer's reaction time. Training emphasizes strength and durability and takes a longer period of time than just the fight itself. At the same time, the trainee needs good rest so that his body will be able to withstand tiredness. Training should always cover both physical and mental preparation. Most important is the emphasis the coach places upon discipline and sportsmanship. Boxing equipment is used both for Thai and Western boxing, as well as for other kinds of sport. Equipment is available for developing physical fitness, the respiratory system, the various muscle groups of the arms, hands, legs and eyes. Boxers train with the help of barbells, dumbbell rods, ropes, single bars and parallel bars. This equipment is the same as Western equipment and is designed to build up stamina. Thai boxing also requires sand-filled bags of heavy, medium and light weight to help in the training of how to use fists, knees, elbows and feet. In particular, to kick and shove away with the foot both quickly and skillfully. Short range and long range wall targets and punch balls are excellent training equipment for developing punching, elbowing, kneeing and kicking, which help develop the body's limbs into becoming fast and efficient weapons of defence. Coach and boxers should be well trained so that the muscles are supple and will work quickly and smoothly when required. Coaches should be able to identify a boxer's weak points and to correct them through further training.
ระครูเท่าคุณครูทั้งนั้นเล่า Acknowledging one's superiors has always been a part of the pre-fight ritual. It is, in fact, paying respect to the teacher, as can be seen in other branches of art, such as in music and dance. The Wai Kru is an annual event. The Wai Kru for Thai boxing is a special ritual. Since all boxers must learn to dance before a fight takes place, otherwise he will not be allowed to begin the fight. This has been a custom and tradition that has been observed by all Thai boxers. Respect for the boxing teacher is not a Buddhist custom, but a ritual in respect of one s superior and parents, so that the boxer will have a concentration of the mind. This ceremony does not conflict with any other religious belief the boxer might hold. The respect ritual starts with clasping hands in a token of worship. The dancing may vary in terms of styles and movements. A school may choose the dancing in terms of posture as it wishes. There are many movements and postures which one may prefer. This is for the purpose of boosting morale and stretching the muscles, creating concentration of the mind, and is a warm-up in itself. The teacher respect ritual and the dancing are important physically, mentally, and also artistically. No boxer would neglect it.
Both this respecting the teacher ritual, the Wai Kru, and the dancing must be learnt this special way. When the flute and the drum sound, the boxer starts dancing in the middle of the ring. He kneels down, clasping his hands together. This pose is regarded by many as beautiful. The fighter concentrates the thoughts of his mind. The Waikru ritual means respect to the teacher. The boxer says a short prayer, while at the same time bowing low three times until his gloves touch the canvas. Now the Ramue, or boxing dance, can begin. It is performed in many different ways, each teacher having his own method, which he teaches to a boxer as it was originally passed on to him. The furious expression is meant to keep away evil spirits. The Ramue serves as a pre-fight warm-up exercise and can last as long as five minutes. Each master will have different styles. A boxer will begin the teppanom position, or clasping his hands in token of worship, and the movement of force face proma or prom sina. The master will demonstrate all these graceful movements for the benefits of his pupils. All the styles of Wai Kru may go as far as teaching the pupils to box right away, to kick to punch, to make use of the feet, knees and elbows. The Ramue dance follows. The body awareness is total and shown by the control of his dance movements facing four directions. Given the many dimensions of the Ramue, it's not surprising that lovers of the sport can immediately assess a boxer's worth before the fight begins. By watching the performance of the Ramue dance, the experienced eye can determine a fighter's inner resolve and abilities by observing the dancing skills he portrays in his ring ritual. There are four ways of dancing, which earned the boxer an extended applause if well executed. At each corner he stops, lowers his head onto the rope and stamps his foot several times. He may kneel on his right knee, with the right foot raised high, keeping balance with the toes of his extended left foot. The dancing begins on the right and then turns to the left side and later turns to the front and finally the back. The music starts slowly at first and becomes faster and louder as the dancing reaches its climax. Thank you. 
The haunting sounds of this Thai music can be heard far beyond the confines of the stadium. The boxer starts displaying a swimming or flying motion with his arms while rocking his body forward and back. He then jumps up and fights an imaginary opponent in a slow motion style. He does this to each of the four corners. At the end, he bows to his opponent. This is the end of the dancing. You will find that the atmosphere of Thai boxing captures parts of an everyday lifestyle in Thailand. Muay Thai or Thai boxing has been handed down from one generation to another. This self-defense technique has become part of our way of life. The essence of Thai boxing is exported worldwide more and more. Many countries have recognized that Thai-style boxing has been a useful discipline for developing both mind and body. <laughs> Thai boxing can be trained both by men and women without the need to harm any person. It is an ideal way for an individual to protect themselves from a violent person. Above all, this is an ancient traditional sport that continues to enjoy large support from a wide cross-section of the community. To understand Thai boxing, you need to recognize the difference between the artistic skills and fighting skills in order to master this ancient sport effectively. A Thai boxing commentary is given to provide the trainee with extra knowledge so that he can develop his skills rapidly and with less difficulty. With many hours practice, anyone with these skills has a chance to become a future champion.
The first coaching which the trainee receives is the basic movements. In step one, the trainee learns how to punch, knee, elbow and kick. Other basic qualities include the development of a healthy body with a strong mind and a courageous soul, patience and perseverance, care and common sense. The basics should be mastered skillfully. And an awareness of one's own mistakes. Before entering the ring, the boxer should remember all the postures and stances and be able to use them effectively so that success and achievement are his. The body and mind must be able to have enough stamina and commitment to last the fight. The boxer should learn to make use of his opponent's weaker points and be aware of their opponent's stronger points. Major and minor tricks should be mastered completely. He must always display good sportsmanship, respect the rules and regulations and the referee's decisions. And he should learn the techniques and be mindful of his weaker points. For good training to happen, it is necessary that both coach and the trainee should understand how the human body works. Boxers should be fit and strong in all areas of the body, since this type of boxing demands greater speed and agility than other types of boxing, where muscular development is all important. Training using muscle building exercises is what Thai boxers should avoid. It gains no advantage over the opponent and can be a waste of time and money. Thai boxing requires close attention to be paid to one's body and in particular that a high level of physical fitness is maintained. Coaches will stress the best part of the body to use, whether it is a fist to punch, the knees, elbows or the feet, so that one can readily tackle any problem. Thai boxing does not depend upon strength only. It requires wit, intelligence and concentration to resolve any problem so that the boxer will always retain the advantage. This is the real essence and spirit of the art. เดินท้องขยับเข้าไปอัพเดตทุกอัพเดตทุกเตะได้ท้อกรรมการ
A boxer should train himself to love and to forgive other people, both in the ring and outside. Thai boxing is not meant to bully other people, but rather it is meant to protect oneself. When the boxing ends, you will see the boxers clasping hands together and forgiving each other. The spirit and attitude of the Thai boxers is very important. This fight has not ended, but please take note that each boxer does not take advantage of each other. The winner does not add any more unnecessary injuries to the loser. He waits patiently until the end of the bout. This is the way a good boxer should act in the ring and towards his opponent. The aim in Thai boxing is not to hurt the defenseless person. It is more of a self-defense technique, not an attack strategy. Firstly, the mind and body should be well prepared, and then the trainee will learn how to punch, elbow, knee and kick correctly. The hands are the first area of the body to concentrate on. When it comes to defence tactics, Thai boxing observes four different techniques. The straight punch, the reverse punch, the swing and the uppercut. Each punch depends upon the way it is used, the skill applied and with what intensity. First of all, you should learn how to clench the fists. You must make sure that the fist is tight. Each time that you punch, you make sure that the knuckles, fingertips and nails are covered. วิธีกดมวยนะเดี๋ยวนี้ต้องดูก่อนนี่นะครับเอาละลองจัดก้าวขาซ้ายให้ก้าวขาขวาดูครับนี่เป็นมวยจดขาออกแล้วเอาก้
หมัดซ้ายนี่ต้องอยู่ปลายคางแอบสอกอยู่ชายโคงเพื่อกันคู่ต่อสู้ดูคู่นะอนุหนึ่งสองซ้าย You should make sure that when you punch, the chin should be at the same height as the shoulders to avoid the counter attack. You punch when you deliver from the same side as the rear leg. The fist and head should be at least the width of a glove. Elbows should be held lower than the armpits, and the gloves should not reach above the head. The target of the straight punch may be classified in two parts, that is, the face and the chin. In boxing jargon, it is called small target, and is regarded as a very difficult punch. But if applied, it has a devastating effect. The straight punch may be aimed at the body, particularly the stomach, which in boxing jargon is called big target, and is regarded as easier to attack. You can train how to punch the face and the body, and the effect is very powerful. มัดเสยเป็นอาวุธหลักอีกอย่างที่ผู้ฝึกมวยต้องใช้A reverse punch aims at the chin of the opponent when you are in the inner circle. The way you punch depends on the way you do it. There are two techniques. When you attack, you must step closer to the opponent and use a straight punch. When you step back and the opponent comes in too far, you can punch the solar plexus, a vital part of the body, and the rib cage or the chin, as you find appropriate. Reverse punch and swing punch are useful for attack since they are strong, and you can hurl the punch very far, aiming at both temples, the chin and the rib cage. These two punches can solve problems very well, since the strength is powerful enough to make the opponent lose their balance, allowing you to attack him more easily.
the straight punch, the uppercut. the reverse punch, the swing. Four basic uses of the fists, which the boxer must learn well, both as an attacker and a counter-attacker. The trainee may not possess a strong punch, but the training, along with other preparation, helps the boxer to be ready for most situations. The essence of Thai boxing is a combination and use of all parts of the body. A good boxer should learn the four basic punching techniques and be very flexible so that fighting success and achievement can be assured. The elbow is the short-range weapon which each fighter should be proficient in using and be fully aware of the damage it can cause. The use of the elbow may be called the intangible weapon. The use of the elbow is different from the punch since the fighter has to do it in the inner circle. With a more or less horizontally held aim, the elbow is snapped forward with a quick shoulder twist. You should not clench the fists when you strike, since it would make the ligament too tight, and it doesn't result in any greater fighting efficiency. You should open the hands and then learn to strike. It is faster than clenched fists and more powerful. Although elbowing is effective, the rules and regulations of Thai boxing do not reward its use with many points. A strike with the elbow does not always aim at the face. One may attack the chest, heart, rib cage ribs, or even the skin. It is more effective than one might expect. The elbow attack is difficult to defend against. But not many fighters use this technique. Elbowing is a very dangerous weapon and a very complicated technique to apply and today is almost no longer found in Thai boxing. We may classify the use of the elbow into two types, the down strike and the upward strike. The down strike is an attack aimed at the face, directed at the top of the head, neck or spine. When one fighter strikes with the elbow, the other should learn how to defend against it and then strike back with the elbow in an upward movement, which may hit the chin or the face easily. You should practice it well enough to ensure accuracy. When you are in the ring, you have only a short time. The use of the elbows not only helps to defend, you can also strike another fighter's head or shoulder in a counter-attack movement.
Thai boxing requires tact and intelligence to turn any disadvantage into an advantage. If the fighter learns to use this properly, the elbow can be a very powerful, efficient weapon. How you defend against the elbow strike is to extend the hand and press on the neck or chest. But when you strike back with the elbow, you should be very careful. We shall talk more about how to strike back with the elbow later. You will find that use of the elbow can be a boxer's secret weapon. In each training session, the boxer wears a gusset, which should be worn like a belt. It is used in exercises for protection from the knees, a third vital weapon. To use the knees effectively requires a great energy and strength. New spectators may prefer wrestling, but those who know the art of Thai boxing will recognize that use of the knee is an important asset and skill for a fighter to possess. Use of the knees can be very effective and powerful. The trainee must make sure that the toes point down towards the ground, as this motion gives more strength and accuracy to the knee when striking another fighter. The trainee should start to exercise slowly to get acquainted with stretching the legs while both hands touch the gunny bag and learn how to keep the knees straight. You should learn the forward knee kick is aimed at the thighs, rib cage, skin, stomach or the chin. Normally, this technique is used after grabbing the opponent's neck or head, which is jerked down while the knee shoots up, and the knee is directed at the head, solar plexus or stomach area. A boxer attracted to knee can get carried away, trying all the time to grab the opponent's head and attacking with the knees only. He may use it to such an extent that spectators may find it strange and lose interest in the fight. The best way to solve this problem is to learn the art again and avoid striking with the knees when the boxer is too far away. When you are attacked by a knee, the best way is to lift the legs in self-defense. Sometimes you should put the foot in between the opponent's legs. This does not do any harm, 
Instead, the referee will just separate the two fighters. Thai boxing has its own style of defense. Since the use of the knee is an inner circle weapon, the best defense is to use your elbows to defend yourself and to grab your opponent's neck and knee him at the same time. One style is to use the hands to grab the neck of your opponent. They can retaliate by using the elbows to the left and the right of the body at once. You should act quickly since the target area may be only available for a few seconds. To master the technique of using one's knees takes a long time. The best defense is by lifting one knee to halt the attack. The referee will then separate the two fighters. Another style is to grab the opponent's neck in the inner circle and put your hand in between the hands of your opponent and push him away so as to make him lose his balance. These two ways of defence may be ineffective. You could grab another fighter's head and knee him. If you are not strong enough, use your hands to halt your opponent's knee attack. Left, jerk on the right. Right, jerk on the left. The best defence for another fighter grabbing your neck is to use both hands to wrap around his hands so he can not grab your neck so easily. At the same time, you can then use your legs to protect yourself from any knee attack. The knee may not be the best weapon if we compare it with the kick, which is more formidable. The overall knee kick is an often seen technique which is applied when an opponent is grabbed around the waist or lower abdomen. The knee is directed at any point of the body it can reach above the attacker's own arms. <laughs> when you use your legs 
they have the longest reach of any other part of your body. They are used for the so-called jumping knee or knee attack carried out with a run and a jump. This technique is feared by every boxer but much loved by the fans. The defending boxer must shove his attacker away with his foot immediately. <laughs> During a clinch between fighters, they can attack by using the round kick. The kick is a long-range weapon which the boxer can get carried away with if the chance opens up. It is interesting to note the kicks are executed with a full-powered follow-through. The round kick is delivered with the instep or lower shin. Usually, rather sensitive parts of the leg that have been toughened to an unbelievable degree. The round kick is directed at the upper and lower parts of the body and has been responsible for a great number of first round knockouts. When a boxer does a round kick, it is done using the shin, not with the toes. The upper leg is softened with repeated kicks. This kick is aimed at the upper part of the body, including the stomach, kidneys and spine, which are also favourite targets. The front kick is directed at the lower part of the body. The target area is instep and the shin and the groin. Along with this is the side thrust, a function similar to that of the front thrust. It is a push of the foot and not a kick. One should practice this art with dedication and skill. The side thrust is directed at the shin, stomach, chest and face.
The back thrust is a push of the foot that is directed at the opponent and is an attacking skill. The jump kick is a combination of both the round kick and the front thrust. It is considered an attack in itself. Not many fighters employ the turn kick. One miss of this kick can result in a swift counter-attack from your opponent. A kick with the toes or sole of the feet is not popular since it is more or less ineffective. A well-aimed kick displays a fighter's superiority and makes his opponent feel small. Punching and the use of legs, knees and elbows as used in the style of Thai boxing demonstrates excellent and accurate techniques. One should believe that training and preparation for a fight is very significant in the final result. All trainees should learn how to stand, step forward and step backward and use long and short weapons attacking or defensive techniques swiftly. These are the fundamentals of the art of Thai boxing. This preparation requires some quality training. One should learn to avoid any damage done to the face. The elbow should remain away, approximately the length of one hand, and it should never be more than this, or it will provide an opportunity for another attack. The elbow should not be near the rib cage, since it can strike back when the fighter is kicked. Left step, left guard. Right step, right guard. The step should be in readiness for attack and defence. The eyes should look forward, watching the opponent at all times. Training should be done to cultivate this habit. You should not flex your muscles, or it will be difficult to use the various techniques effectively. When the fighter has learnt the art of punching, grabbing the neck, elbowing and kicking the upper part of the body, including how to use these areas of the body proficiently, he should continue to refine these skills in what in boxing jargon is called the minor art. A fighter learns how to defend a punch with straight elbowing. The hand can block the opponent's punch and the elbow can hit the face. This posture is almost the same. The fighter uses the hand to evade the fists and strike his elbow at the chin, neck or nose. When the opponent punches the fighter, he should strike downwards and aim his elbows at the stomach or ribcage area. A fighter may duck a right punch by deflecting it under his arm and strike with his elbow at the nape of his opponent's neck.
A foot thrust is a long-range technique which can be used to avoid the punch, even if the opponent is very quick. If the opponent punches with his left fist, the fighter may use his right punch to grab the neck and strike his knee on the opponent's ribcage. The fighter moves to the right to evade the punch and uses his left hand to grab the neck and strike with the knee at the ribcage. A round kick on the left and right helps to evade punches. When the opponent's back leg is kicked, the fighter may bend the body and kick the front leg. The fighter parries off the opponent's punches and kicks him on the neck from either right or left. The fighter steps back a little, uses his left hand to parry off the punch and uses his right hand to grab the head and strike a combination of kicks and knee jerks at the chin or face. Use the left hand to parry off the punch and strike the right elbow at the jaw. Use the left hand to block the opponent's arm and deliver a punch to the face. One should learn to receive the elbow attack and practice how best to counter-attack it. When another fighter kicks, the defender should bend their body quickly. Employing the elbow to receive the kick and then to use the elbow to strike out the shin. The boxer can fight back with the elbow when his opponent strikes at the face.
use two hands to wrap around the hands of the opponent and use the legs to block any knee attack. Or use the hands to grab the chin of the opponent and deliver a knee attack. A good fighter may use his knee to deliver a jumping kick. He may lift his right leg to block it. He may lift his knee up to the buttocks. He may strike his left knee on the shin in a counter-attack. When a fighter is kicked, he may use a straight punch to hit the opponent's face. may swing his punch at the left or right jaw. Or use a reference punch on the chin. The fighter may bend his body and strike with an elbow. A thrust with the foot may be used before an opponent can effectively make a counter-attack. A thrust with the foot may be avoided with a kick. The fighter may push it aside by a left or right foot thrust. One should not alternate between left or right. because one may lose balance doing this. A kick on the leg or shin or the body or neck would make the other side lose their bearing.
ผู้ฝึกมวยไทยเมื่อฝึกจนสามารถใช้อาวุธหมัดเท้าเข่าสอบทั้ง The trainee learns how to employ the fists, legs, knees and elbows for both attack and counterattack movements. Thai boxing is beneficial in several ways. It is an art in itself. It is good exercise. It may be a source of valuable income for some people, and it is a very efficient form of self-defence. In case a person attacks you, simply lift your hands. Don't contract your muscles. Use your right hand to throw the attacker's arm aim, and then swing your elbow at his temples or face. This will cause the attacker to fall down. In situations where your attacker uses a knife, simply bend your body when he is going to stab. Deflect him away with your right hand and quickly grab his arm, and use it to stab him back in the groin. In case someone wants to hit you with a club, move in. And use your forearm or elbow to push him hard away from you, and deliver an elbow to his face. การฝึกฝนและพยายามคิดประดิษฐ์ท่ามวยไทยให้ใช้รับมือกับคนร้ายต้อง If you learn these techniques. They will help you to become courageous and less fearful. Any part of the body, especially the groin, can be attacked. One could say that in this situation, it is a life and death struggle. The register of boxing camps at the Lumpini office in Bangkok indicates that there are some 630 camps. More than 200 send their boxers to fight in different stadiums around the country. Many of these camps are well known and have a high reputation for coaching excellence. At present, 
The total number of Thai boxers in Thailand is unknown. Those who are selected to fight should receive quality training. The reputation of the coaches and the boxing camps should be officially recognised so that boxing fans are not disappointed with the standard of each boxer. As we have seen, although some boxing camps are no longer in existence, several boxing camps have become well known. What Thai boxing is never short of is good quality boxers who are accepted and admired by both locals and other people from around the world. Many boxing camps have a high reputation for their training standards and achievements. Here is a brief introduction to some of them. Sing Muang Nakon Camp. The essence of a boxer should be a harmony of mind and body, with tactical skills which should be employed to achieve winning success. This famous camp is located at Soi Aton Upatam, Bangsu in Bangkok, under the leadership of Mai Muang Khan, a former newspaper reporter. The camp is famed for coaching techniques in punching and kicking. There have been many boxers who have won prizes and championships, such as Jaren Tong, Samran Tong, and Jaren Sam. These fighters from the Kitaban Chong camp are greatly admired by the public. Muay Thai, when Silapa Bajam Chat, when Sad Lessin, Chan Sung Kong Kong Thai, Sung Tu Lok. กำลังยอมรับอยู่ในขณะนี้อยากจะฟังให้พ่อแม่พี่น้องช่วยการรักษาช่วยการการอนุรักษ์เพื่อลูกหลานของไทยในอนาคตข้างหน้าครับวาวลาปอง boxing camp one should fight with heart and soul this is the essence of the fighting style for the final victory with expertise and experience this camp is led by วาวลาปอง mon sai chon and nam nan jai three famous coaches who have turned boxers into great athletes who have learnt a great deal from them Hey, 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 hey,
Many have become top champions. These three gentlemen of the Thai boxing art have coached several flyweight and junior flyweight champions. The camp is well known amongst professional boxers. Hong Sawang Camp, a good sportsman, regarded as the best in Thailand. This camp is located at Sein Nam Niwet village, Bang Ken in Bangkok, and is led by Son Pong Pong Sawang, or Cha Den Tai. The camp is well known for its master tricks and minor tricks, as well as stamina in terms of fighting to the last round. The camp has been widely admired by boxers of the highest standards. This camp has produced several champions of international standard. Some won the 105 pounds championship granted by the WBC or World Boxing Council. The motto of this camp is the ultimate victory in the ring. Coach Odds Camp has the motto. Tact and intelligence are what the camp finds very significant. This camp is situated in Buyai, Korat, or Nakhon Rachasima, and Coach Odd is its leader. Odd is a top expert in the Thai boxing art. He regards intelligence as a most important weapon so that a boxer can learn how to use the fists, knees, legs and elbows proficiently. During the past 10 years, he has had many famous students who have gone on to become champions.
Nongki Paha Yut Camp. All styles and tricks help boxers to be the top fighters, says their motto. Many regard this as one of the best in Thailand. It is located in Buriram province and the camp chief is Pramot Haimok. The camp is renowned for its offensive and defensive styles. Most fighters are good in tricks and can subdue other boxers very quickly. The camp has created many champions who are skillful in kneeing. The champions have also been recognized and won many awards from the Thai Boxing Council. การฝึกหัดมวยไทยจะต้องพร้อมทั้งร่างกายและจิตใจจึงจะเข้าถึงแก่นแท้ของศิลปะมวยไทย At present, the camp is well known for coaching Thai boxing using both master tricks and minor tricks. Pa Mun Ubon Camp. We shall use all possible tricks of the Thai boxing art to win the fight, says their motto. This camp is under the excellent leadership of Pot Wong Mun Jang, a famous northeastern coach from Ubon. The camp is known for its coaching of boxing tactics. In 1996, Ning Ubon Sitlachai and Oranot Mung Luobon became champions themselves. This camp is recognized for fighting to the finish. Kapom tat muay ma paman ha sit pi in kadai. Kapom mi kwam man ok man kai neo ne tija sanap sanun sung se muay kai kalot pai. The camp of Sit Yod Tong Payakuron. Has a motto reading, the heart should fight with good defense and attack tactics. This camp is located in Bang Ramong, Cholbri province, with coach Yod Tong Senanan, or better known as Tui, as its leader. The camp is regarded as a premier school, well known both at home and abroad. The style of this camp is very artistic and yet very tricky. Versatile 
and yet beautiful in terms of the fighting form. Its fame has spread far and wide. During the past 40 years, Coach Dewey has created several champions. In fact, in excess of 20 fighters. Three of the champions received the Sports Reporters Association Annual Award for Sporting Achievement. It started with the two brothers of the Payakarun family. Samart Payakarun also became a bantamweight world champion. Recently, Chachai Paisitong received the excellent Thai Boxers Award. Today, the trainees at Yodtong Payakarun Camp still continue to create many champions who have mastered both the art and style of this sport. Pray a nun camp. Proudly believes in master tricks and minor tricks are the crux which should be moulded with the fighting spirit of a true fighter. The name of this camp is very prominent within the Thai boxing community. Many have enrolled as its trainee. The camp is led by Wichit Lungbang Prasoi, a former Thai and international amateur champion who was well known some 20 years ago. This camp is famous for its ferocious boxing style and is regarded as a top coaching venue for all kinds of tricks. This camp has produced many champions who are unmatched for their boxing style and art. The most famous are Suwit Sakaurat, Cha Chai Singdam, and Kukrit Nayam, who styled themselves as the great fighters. The rules and regulations are most important for all kinds of sports, but have been continuously improved to ensure that a contest can be held with fairness, justice and safety for all persons. The Thai boxing rules and regulations have taken into account both the professional and amateur boxer, so that now a large number of amateur boxers can enter the contest. The main difference between the amateur and professional boxing rules 
may best be summed up as follows. Two types of boxing ring exist. For the amateur, the small size is 20 by 20 feet, while the larger size is 24 by 24 feet. For the professional, the small size is 12 by 12 feet, and the large size, the same as for the amateur, is 24 by 24 feet. The height of the ring for the amateur is at least 3 to 4 feet, while that of the professional is around 4 to 5 feet. The rope around the ring for amateur and professional has four threads with the diameter of three to five centimetres. The amateur ring is bordered by four poles. With a height from the platform of 40, 80, 120 and 150 centimetres respectively. While the professional ring is set at the height of 45, 75, 105 and 135 centimetres respectively. Altogether, in the Western boxing style, there are 14 weight categories, ranging from 42 kilograms to more than 91 kilograms. Thai boxing is categorised into 19 weights, from 47 kilos to more than 95 kilos. Amateur boxing sets a number of rounds at three or five, depending on agreement. Each round is two minutes long, with a one minute break in between. The professional boxes either a three minute or a five minute round with a two minute break in between. Thai boxing allows for two trainers to be at ringside, but only one of them can enter the ring at any one time. Thai boxing allows for two trainers to be at ringside, but only one of them can enter the ring at one time. The trainers can declare that the boxer loses the fight by throwing in the towel or sponge. If it is a professional contest, the rule allows for three trainers to be present. In this instance, only two can enter the ring. Trainers cannot declare that the professional loses the fight. The rules and regulations determine that both professionals and amateurs observe the teacher respect ritual and practice a traditional dancing, which is a pre-fight warm-up exercise. If a boxer doesn't do this, he is not allowed to enter the contest. During the fight, the playing of traditional Thai music is all part of the contest. For the teacher respect ritual and traditional dance ceremony, the boxer wears a string around his biceps, and this may be worn throughout the fight. During the pre-fight ritual, the fighter also wears a headdress of a finger-thick cord around the head. The difference between an amateur and a professional is that the amateur may wear head protection and a shin guard, as provided by the boxing regulations. Vaseline and other potentially dangerous or harmful substances may not be applied or used by the fighter. Professionals cannot have long hair or sport a beard, but a moustache may be worn so long as it doesn't extend the length of the lip. Thai amateurs and foreign athletes are not restricted by these regulations. Scoring is based on a clean fight. The winner of each round retains maximum points, while half a point is subtracted from the loser according to his performance. In the heat of the battle, strict boxing rules are not always remembered. It sometimes takes a referee, as tough as the fighters themselves, to keep the action clean. A fighter who is blocked by his opponent and fails to make contact when using his arms, hands and legs receives no score.
Each round has 20 points. The one who fights better gets 20 points. The one who fights less loses points. If both of them are equally matched, they get the same scores. In case of professional boxing, each round has 10 points. The winner gets 10 points whilst the loser gets 9. If the winner can win clearly, he gets 10, while the loser gets 8. If he can knock out his opponent, he gets 10 points, whilst the opponent gets 7. In the case of a foul, the offending boxer receives no points. There are many more rules and regulations for professionals and amateurs in Thai boxing. These are comprehensively learned by the boxer during training. Today, the Thai boxing art is being accepted and admired the world over. Thai boxing is no longer strictly limited to the Thai national. Trainees are welcome, no matter what nationality. But all should pay attention to receiving proper training, which in turn requires a great effort, a strong fighting spirit. With this in mind, one can then discover the essence, that is the art, of Thai boxing.